Hi guys and a very warm welcome back to the new Sanding Junction and episode two of the build. So let's roll the intro and let's see what's happening. Hi everybody and a warm welcome back. As I said just now, uh, it is episode two and the first one of the new build where I have been left to my own devices without the influence or the help and the knowledge that Julian provided when he was here for that week. So he is sadly missed out of the scene right now because I was left with a very, very big incline to complete or make from scratch really. I had to do the template, I had to do the cutting and I had to get it right and had to do all those L brackets. On top of that, I also had to do and finish the upper level tables, put those together, cut the uh, tops out and fix them in place, make sure they're all fitted properly. And then all the upstands had to be made as well. So yeah, how did I get on? Well, join me and I'll show you how it went and what happened and stay to the end when I show you the outcome of all of it. But hopefully next time I talk to you in the next video, we should be at the start of land some tracks. So enjoy this one. It's a lot shorter than the last one. And uh, it's probably not as interesting because Julian's not in part of it, but he is still here and he's still sitting on here, making sure I'm doing the right job. So catch it all very soon. Take care. Hi everybody and a very warm welcome back to the continuing build at New Sandlin Junction. Now this is pretty much the start of part two of this continuing build and following on from last week when Julian and I got so far with the layout before he had to leave and go back to his home in New Zealand, I hope to be carrying on in the, in the same vein and with the same precise care that Julian and I took in the very first uh, part of this build. Now, all I've done is I've made a load of these up. These are the posts that we spoke about. All they are is 20 by 44 millimeter timber. They have to end up, or the top board has to end up 180 millimeters above the top of the baseboard here. So they've been measured at 225, which allows for fixing to the timbers below and enough upstand to cater for the knees that we require to go around on the whole uh, setup. Now, all I've done is I've placed a few in strategic places. And when I have enough set up ready to go, and that includes cutting a few slots in here to make those ones in the front support, then I will continue to do it. Now, what I've done here is I've actually gone a little bit further and I have put a whole raft of them in this section. They do support the whole of that top deck there. Now, that also is the deck with my ADM turntable in. So that's all been recessed and it's been um, supported underneath correctly so it can't move. And that, I hope, will do the job. My only concern, I think I may have already said this, that the weight of this whole unit here without that in it and without anything on top of it is extremely heavy and taking it on and off may result in damage to or misalignment of any of these supports under here splitting the timber something like that so I'm a little bit worried by it it may be that in the fullness of time I may cut this down through here double brace it and have one section there, one section here to lift out. This one is another big one here, but hopefully this one will be a little easier because I don't have to lean so far over to pick it up and pick it up level. Here I have to do quite a bit of leaning through this area to get that plonk down without doing any damage. So it does concern me, but we will see what happens. Now just coming around here, to where everything has been left from our last piece of work. These are the tops that are now complete for the areas behind me that I've just been showing you. And I have just created a paper template all the way around here up to that section there, which is the upper rise. So it's the last of the inclines that's going up, up, and it's rising all the way around the back here. 
It's a single track and it will come up here across a simple girder bridge into the top deck, which is not yet in place. In fact, it comes into this area here. So there's a bit of uh, space to play around with in here to fill out and sort out. But essentially, that's where the line will come into this part here. And that will be all the levels complete. So, OK, so I've been out in the garage. I have cut that last incline to shape and it's cut through that point there so it's in two halves and I had to make a little compromise because I would have had to have bought um, more timber and so the compromise was that I had to turn this sheet over to the rougher side there's a little area there that is not as good as the face side but it will do that's going to be uh, a load of scenery over there so it really doesn't matter Hey okay, everybody well i left it just now where i would put this piece in place and it was running out of true here the wall is so out of plumb at the back end there near the window that i decided that it needed doing i couldn't put up with it so i took it back downstairs had another go at it and in fact i tried it twice taking a little bit out each time there is a little bit of not straightness over there but um yeah it is what it is but it fits now and I will leave it like this until I start building all the upstands for it very shortly. Hi everybody and a very warm welcome back. Now it's been a few days and we're at the weekend again and my chance to do a little bit more to uh, Sandlin Junction certainly when it comes to the build of these final parts of the baseboards. Now I did actually, well, the last time you saw me, I was actually setting up the risers for that great big sweeping uh, incline or decline, which way you're going on it. Um, but I was setting up the risers that went around that big arc around underneath the window to meet up with the top tier and the other tier on the other side. And I did a good job, set the risers up and uh, everything was fine made the L brackets I enjoyed all of that and it was looking good and I then used my two pieces of timber that I'd saved back to cut that baseboard template out and I, cut, I used a paper template as we'd done before and I cut it all out and it didn't quite fit <laughs> I gotta say it really didn't quite fit um, I, I don't know, I guess the templates have moved slightly and working on your own with such a vast piece of cardboard that stretches right the way across the room and also up beyond each side of you is very difficult to keep an eye on everything. What I should have done probably is taped it to the board or clamped it so it couldn't move. So there was a couple of sort of schoolboy errors in there. Now it did go together and it did fit the only thing is that there were little sort of shapes like that appearing at the joint so it wasn't a butt joint it wasn't great and if i was prepared to put up with so so average or whatever then i would have probably left it as it was but um i showed julie in the photographs and um julian said mm -mm, start again so i did uh, I went out and got a new piece of board, which you see here underneath me, ready to cut the new templates out. I then got some more of the board that I was using before, and I've been very, very careful, at least I hope I have, <laughs> about how I've worked this out this time. I've taped it all, worked it all out. Now, I can't, sadly, I can't get this whole shape out of one eight by four board unfortunately it goes up beyond me on each side and i don't really want a multiple set of joints over a short period of distance so what i'm doing is over the back here where i had planned on it in the first place or where julie and i have planned on it being that's where i'm cutting it so i've made a mark there which will coincide with the l bracket underneath it so I will have to then cut the template out of each side of the uh, base of the this piece of half inch. Now, uh, hopefully I've got this right because at 25 pound a board or more, I can't keep making mistakes. So this one has to be the right one. I hope it will be. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to 
cut, if I can show you this, I'm going to cut this through here where it's marked and that will be the joint. So this one will then swing round and this one will swing round. So I've got these long edges along the long edges of the board. I hope that's how it's going to work out. I'm not too sure. I hope so. I get these sort of ideas in my head. Is it going to be okay? Is it not? So what I'm going to do now anyway is I'm going to put a piece of board underneath, carefully cut round with a sharp edge blade, a retractable knife, and uh, cut these shapes out. And then I hope we can then cut or at least tape them down to the board, mark them with a pen, and as you've seen in the previous video, then jigsaw them out. Fingers crossed this time, I got it right. Who knows? We'll see. All right, I'm going to carry on. I'll probably time lapse what happens next, unless it all goes terribly wrong and then I may just start again. Stay where you are. Hey okay, guys, welcome back. Now I'm back up in the train room, obviously, and I have got the new cut boards to go in here, ready to go. But before I do that, I'm actually going to start putting in and clamping up all the L brackets that were created for the section as it goes all the way around to over here. So that's my next job. I'm going to set them up initially and then I'm going to try and hopefully those new boards will fit. <laughs> yeah, this could be a short video if I don't get it right, but hopefully I have, hopefully they'll be fine. And um, I'll let you know in due course. That's all later. I'm going to time lapse what I'm doing now, but yeah, we'll see where we go. Okay, everyone, well, you've just seen me put all those risers in place. I've simply clamped them. And the idea was with a certain measurement that Julian had provided for me, I created them at a certain depth so that when you clamp them up flush to the underneath of the baseboard, they should be exactly, as long as I've measured them correctly, they should be exactly where I want them to be in terms of the height going around this uh, whole section. Now, if I got it wrong, it's not the end of the world because all I've got to do is adjust one clamp or two clamps before I decide to screw them home and complete that section of the job. So I'm going to now, <laughs> this is the crux. This is, did I manage to do those pieces of timber correctly or have I got to go out and buy another sheet of 8x4 timber and start again? 
this opener. Um, I've worked hard on trying to get these set up with the paper proforma first, cutting them out. You've seen me do that. Hopefully it's right. And if it's not right, then I'll have to make a decision based on how good or how bad that may be. So without going on too long about this, let's get on. Let's see if they fit. Huh? There's a little bit of a lap there, but if that's the only problem, there's a slight gap at the other side. I don't quite how that happened, but um, everything else is straight. Everything else is good. There's just a little gap. Not, I can straighten that out and probably just ease it, tease it this way a little bit. But that's not so bad. I allowed for anything, but hopefully, once that's in place, that's good. Yeah, so if I trim a little bit off for this one, and because I've just brought that forward, I think I can just square that end off over there, and that should meet up quite nicely. So two little cuts, I think I'll be home and dry. Well, <laughs> let's stop talking about it, let's get it done. Hey everybody, carrying on from where I last left off and what I was about to do was to make a cut over there and a cut there and I've done those two cuts and they this one's gone in really really tight, really nice. This one just about a millimeter gap between them but nothing to speak of, it really is so infinitesimal. I even think I would get it past Julian, <laughs> I wish. Anyway, I've set them in. Now I've not fixed anything. These are still clamped all the way around. All these L brackets are clamped. I have made one adjustment over there. If you remember it was rocking a little bit. That's sorted out. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put some track from here somewhere over here. Let it run across there all the way down and around over here and just see if everything runs without any lumps, bumps, uh, and, and horrible things happening. So I'm going to give it a good testing over a couple of days before I decide to finally fix the L brackets in place and then I can screw the chops down to the L brackets and then that will be job done in this area. Now just swinging around to the other side I still have got all of the top upper deck surfaces in place. Now the reason for that is that I really wanted to make sure that this and this were as they should be, and they are, I'm quite happy with that. I have to make a new area here. Um, I haven't got that looking good at all, and Julian has given me a revised uh, idea for that. So what I'm gonna do is make a new end support for this uh, incline board. And then when I've done that, when that's all happy, and this is where it should be, then these three boards will come apart, come down and be stored in the garage until such times as all the track underneath and around everywhere else has been laid, tested and done. And then I can come in and start thinking about laying the track needs for the turntable, the TMD and everything else that needs to go on here, including the island platforms for the new station up that end. So that's a long way off at the moment because I do want to get a loop of track on and around. I want to get this one here, the hidden fiddle yards under there and everything up around the back here on here without the worry of these tables being in my way. So they will be removed. As I say, they've been set up, they've been tested. I know they're fine. And all that will happen is once I'm happy with the track, I will then Put these back in place and start building the track upon those so yeah that's where we're at i don't know if i'm going to get any more done this week um i wanted to get some of the old uh, cabinets that i have for displaying my locos up on the wall
Hey okay, everybody, well, that's it. Uh, the elevation is in, it's screwed home firmly and I've checked it time and time again. Made a couple of rookie mistakes when it comes to drilling some holes in the top. I thought I'd measured where the holes should be, um, but a couple of the pilot holes missed the timber underneath, but hey ho, that's not a worry because that will all be lost in the scenics later on. But at the same time, I'm really happy with it. It's going up and down as it should do. And the last part of the inclines and, and the fairly, I suppose, complex parts of this build have been now completed. And with Julian's help, as I say, and I keep saying, and a great deal of thanks to him, but you know, all of these multiple layers going up and down and joining each other and coming out in the right places really only happened because of his uh, so ability to work things out on the computer ahead of time so that when we came to do all of this build it really went together quite easily i say quite easily <laughs> yeah well we all know the answer to that one but at the end of the day it is all working i am really happy and i think now that i'm going to clear up have a hoover up and clean down everything get all the sawdust out of the way and then I can sort of get everything out over there and put it down in the garage, ready and put away. And then I can start laying some cork and some track. So let's get on. Hi everybody and a warm welcome back. Now before I finish this video off, I just want to show you or bring you up to speed with where we are. And there are all the tables. You've seen them before. They're all finished off and I'm going to take those down now either today or first thing tomorrow, so I can actually start thinking about laying some uh, cork down and, and the first ideas of track. And that will feature in the next video. But to conclude this one, there is one piece here that I've got to remake, and I'm gonna be talking to Julian later today with regards on how best we accomplish that, because it's not quite as simple as I thought it might be, but there will be a conclusion. And also here, the, this incline is the last one in the series that we needed to put in. And I've managed to get this in. I've tested it no end of times and it is working beautifully. And I really am pleased with the outcome. So that is all done. And that really does bring to an end all the worktops, the surfaces uh, of the layout tables. And the only other thing that I've done uh, since I spoke to you last is I've actually built in my old uh, display units and they are now on the wall such as they are. There are two of them and a little space over there. Now they're accommodating probably two thirds of my trains. There are many trains. I've got about another 35 or so that are not actually out on display. And I need to figure out how I can build some more of these type of units in here to accommodate other locomotives. And that will always exclude my rolling stock carriages and wagons. They will have to be kept in some of these um, ideal boxes that you can buy. I have many of them that the locomotives that you see here have just come out of, so I have plenty of spare. But I really am uh, enjoying seeing these again for the first time in quite a year or two now. And it was nice to be able to, even though it was just running up and down, it was nice to bring a few of them back out, listen to their sounds where they have them, and just see them on display on the walls one more time. So there are a lot here, and there are still a lot to come out. Now, whether or not, and this is going to be a big question, uh, after watching a video from Iron Horse uh, a week or so back on the fact that we're a bit like magpies. We see something, we like it, we buy it. Yeah, I'm guilty of that. But I'm getting to the point now with this layout that I've got way too many locomotives, certainly from the point of view of era. I mean, I've got stuff that goes prior to uh, 1900 all the way up to the uh, javelin, the high-speed javelin that runs through. So there's a lot here I don't really need. And I'm thinking that with this new sanding junction layout that I may well uh, start thinking about culling some of my locomotives and selling some on 
into eBay or any other of these selling sites that we uh, tend to use and just really concentrate on certain locomotives that I want. Now, you all know I love my C-classes. I love my spam cams and I love my ugly ducklings and I also love my Cromptons and my Salsa Type 2. So quite where I'm going to go with all that, I do not know. Um, I love all the locomotives that I've bought, otherwise I wouldn't have bought them. So if I decide to sell any, it's going to have to be a big wrestling match with my mind, my conscience, my heart and my wallet. So we shall see. I don't know. But anyway, I just wanted to show you them up on the wall. And at this point, I think I'm going to call it a day on this video, get it out there for you to see. I'm sorry it's not as an exciting one as the one I put out before with Julian being here. I'm back on my own now. So uh, I will carry on with this build. And as I say, the tables are now finished apart from one little L bracket. And then I can start putting up track and cork and start the real business of building this new layout in earnest so yeah so join me next time and we'll see how we get on all the best to you all happy modeling stay safe wherever you are take care see you soon bye bye